God. Now listen, I asked for Naya not to uh, get down yet because I felt like God, like the set that they sang this morning was almost the set they sang at the prison. Okay, but it wasn't exactly, but y'all got to taste a little bit of that. And I wanted, I felt like the Lord wanted me to have you share your testimony that you shared, I mean, it, the way it comes out today, uh, that you shared with the prison so that they can get a little bit of an idea of, of, what, of what happened over there. Amen? Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Okay, I have no idea, but uh, <clears throat> praise God. Uh, <clears throat> so we were uh, at the prison yesterday, and... Um, they asked me to give my testimony and basically I usually go one direction with my testimony but the Lord kind of took me another way and um, I was talking about uh, mainly how when I was a little girl I was about five or four I, I only met my biological father maybe like two times uh, I can remember in my life I don't really remember what he looks like I was very young but he took me out one time and I felt like I was kind of like on an interview like I was like trying so hard to be like the perfect uh, little girl to like win his affection and hoping that he would stay in my life. And so uh, I remember we were poor uh, growing up. We didn't have much. All the clothes that I've ever was given when I was younger was hand-me-downs, literally. Um, and I was tall, so I would have high waters. And my grandmother, she wasn't able to braid because uh, she saved my um, aunt one time from a boyfriend that was trying to kill her and so she grabbed the knife and he, he slit her hand and so she lost all her nerve movement in her hand and she was taking care of us about 15 kids taking care of us and she couldn't braid so she would braid my hair and I would have these big old braids and they would stand out and stick out everywhere but but I was clean I'll tell you what she cleaned that house and there wasn't a crumb on there was nothing you could eat off that floor you could see your reflection and uh, I remember just uh, having my hot waters on I picked out my best jeans my best shirt and I remember the shirt it was green and it was green and blue it was actually like a boy shirt it was buttoned up and it had holes in it but I wore it my hair was all sticking out I remember trying to put it down because I know he was coming for me and I went downstairs and he cooked he took me and we went we went and ate and uh I was always hungry I was always hungry we didn't have a lot of food I mean I tell you I would eat up everything and I still like to eat but I would eat up everything when I was younger a lot worse but uh I remember him getting me a sandwich and I was eating that thing up and I ate it so fast and then after he just kind of was just staring at me. I don't even know what we talked about, but I remember when he left, when he came back and dropped me off on the porch and I was thinking to myself, I hope I did enough to like win his affection. I hope this was enough. I hope I was the little girl that he wanted and uh, he never came back, never seen him, never seen him again. But I remember feeling growing up feeling, you know, what did I do not to, well, not to win his love? What did I do not to win his affection? What was wrong with me that he didn't love me? And I remember having that feeling so strong growing up as a, as a girl, as a little girl. And uh, uh, I never, never knew him. And then my mom, of course, she was on drugs and she came in and out of my life and she left. But I was talking about adoption yesterday at the prison, and it was crazy, actually, it was about 15, it was about maybe 12 to 10 guys that were actually adopted in the group, and I was talking about being adopted into the kingdom of God, and how God has adopted us, and he loves us with an everlasting love. He's not a father that will leave you, he's not a father that you have to impress, he's not a father that you have to win his affection, he willfully gives you his love, and we did nothing but just believe, and that... That's what I was talking about yesterday, and I ended up getting adopted at the age 13, and my mom and dad took me in, and I remember asking them at 13, why do you want me? Why would you even want me? I'm not yours. My own blood didn't want me. My own biological family didn't want me. Why do you want me? And I remember my mom saying, she said, because of the love of God. Because of the love of God. He told us to love you. We want to just show you God's love for you. And I remember broken, just being broken, just literally the one time she said, I literally just was at her feet, just crying at her feet and just, because I didn't understand it, I couldn't comprehend this love that was unconditional and uh, I remember that day saying, I want to serve the God that loves me, that told you to love me, that's the God I want to love, so I was 13, I gave my heart to the Lord on Valentine's Day and I, I learned the true love of God so I just wanted to share that with you guys this morning. Hey. 
I don't know what that did to you. No. As soon as I knew where she was going with the story, tears just started. And then I couldn't even see because I was way up at the front. I had all the prisoners behind me. <laughs> but they said that men were just weeping. Can you imagine being a man in prison and you did that to your kids? Oh, my God. It was a powerful, powerful day. Praise God.